And the point is, is not that where this comes from, why you feel that. You have to embrace this human side, this human condition. Embrace it, acknowledge, accept, so that you can rise. Rise to your true status of who you are. And the true status of who you are is always above human condition. Always in all circumstances. In other words, the essence of who you are, whenever you say I, I, whenever you say something with reference to yourself, irrespective of how you feel in the moment, it's only one presence you speak of. It's that presence, that presence that shines forth in all circumstances. It's the only you in you, the only true you in you. See? So that is untouched by any experiences. I come up again with the same topic of pain um, because I think I need a little bit more guidance. In the last um, days after we kind of re revealed where the pain is on this energetic level, it acts like a wild animal. You switch light and now yeah, there's a kind of fight starting. So the pain against my awareness. And I realized a pattern of dissociation when the pain rises up. Not if it's on a lower level, but um, yesterday morning in the yoga session and also in the meditation it was really intense and I, I could not move and I don't know how should I align in this moment and not to dissociate because I, in my understanding I think um, I have to hold it in awareness but I'm not capable right now to stay with this pain in that moment. So my question is how to deal with it and not to... Yeah. Not to dissociate. Yeah. It could be something very, very, very particular, very specific that doesn't have the power to express itself. In any case, everything is because of some inability of some kind of self-expression. Whatever is not expressed is then compressed and causes further compression. It needs to be expressed. It needs to be let out. That's what expression is. Otherwise, it becomes the source of that what begins to ferment in the body. But in this case, not in a nice way. If we ferment something, as with an example of winemaking, but here, right, is something which causes all these unpleasantries, all this, all this what could manifest in so many different ways on a somatic level. And if given there are strong, strong connection of how our mind works as well, in whenever we lost in the dark in terms of the reasons for this or that, then it's a fertile ground for imagination, for play of all this that comes in and and impacts our well-being. You see, so the express the the potentiality for expression further dampened, further diminished. So it's almost like enters the vicious circle. So it's very important to somehow find a way to let it unpress itself. So you need to find a way to express this so that it doesn't get compressed. Mm. Uh, 
not at all to take it on board. It's just as a, a commentary. For example, prior to the development of a current state of affairs, when it comes to the allopathic medicine, uh, the medical procedures in the West were quite drastic in not so long time ago history. One of the most common thing was letting of blood. It was so common that it's like unbelievable. Uh, my, you might have read about it or come across yes. that, right? It's mm -hmm. If you studied Ayurveda, maybe in association with that, how so many um, alignments were treated with letting of blood. Somehow it f there was this understanding that many, many problems are caused by whatever impurity in the blood, you know, because blood goes through the, right, through liver. That whole thing is like liver acts as a filter. So if there are impurities in blood, they like start, start clogging the liver and the whole thing in you know, blood also in more kind of associated with medieval understanding of the medical treatments, which had kind of similar, but not with such precision, harmony and depth of understanding as the humors in Ayurveda, right? There were this uh, physiological and psychological type. I don't know how many of you have come across that, you know, sanguinic, melancholic, mm -hmm. Choleric, right? Have you heard about this? I Phlegmatic, this. Yeah. the four types, and they would be even a square, right? A square drawn, and which of the temperament, how mm. that reflects, and a combination of that temperament, yeah? what one most likely will suffer from. So it was quite helpful. So the letting of the blood was prescribed routinely because it believed to be bringing immediate results. Well, we know from Ayurvedic point of view, this definitely is helpful in the cases of, let's say, excess of pitta. Blood is the here, where, right? Expression of the fire element, right? Blood, rakta, yeah. as a tissue. So... Letting off the blood is immediately taking off excess of pitta. So there's already release, relief on the liver, on the activity of the liver. And whenever the blood is let, there is immediate uh, mechanisms of replenishing the red blood cells because that's how it functions. It needs to be always in a certain content. The body starts to absorb more nutrient stuff from food. So perhaps this was the understanding. I'm just mm -hmm. following the kind of like insights that what and why. Why am I saying this? So it's like blood was kind of like an expression. See? Expression of something which is here, a fiery element, too much in the body and causes this. You see? So disclaimer, right? That's not what I'm prescribing here. <laughs> So okay. it's just a commentary, right? Commentary. Um, otherwise, it's like it could be, you know, any vampires in the room? <laughs> is a, he's a. Um, what is it that there as an emotion that doesn't flow out easily, which in turn potentially could be the accumulation over the years of a certain natural, organic, legitimate way of how we relate. So a build-up or accumulation of that could cause this somatic disturbances. I mean, disturbances, first of all, at the pranic level, which leads to these somatic conditions where pain becomes acute and chronic, mm. 
when something it's absolutely normal to experience pain from time to time it's very important to experience pain from time to time pain signals something heralds something it's a reminder it's even a reminder that we're alive experiencing pain so from time to time something there excess of something leads to something there is pain and then adjustments begins what we don't want is the chronic conditions yeah. when something settles in and then begins this process of deterioration begins to rob us of this sense of you know joy of being alive lightness of being and physical pain in particular is not something we should walk around and we should always examine that check that why is it painful what is it signaling what is the body trying to communicate to me i'm willing to listen now i'm not going to ignore it i'm going to stop in my tracks and i'm going to start paying attention not just gonna you know like i don't know in your case but so many of us are so busy so much on the go then and the pharmacology there doesn't run short on suppressants of all sorts of all kinds people's digestion goes out of the window and they immediately start applying all these pharmaceutical uh, preparations instead of addressing and redressing the way they eat instead of addressing the right the source of it the cause of it symptomatology is being treated we can't afford that you can't afford that mm. so therefore you need to look into the cause of that at at the level of what causes that deep seated sense of inadequacy and discomfort mm. discomfort for too long bring breeds this is it brings the conditions where the body will have to carry this as punishment desperately trying to communicate something so we can't ignore that so of course it goes without saying it's not diagnosing anything i'm not in a position to diagnose i'm only in a position to reflect something to you so that you look into this and examine this including examining this from allopathic perspective as well mm. how is your spleen working so very close here the state of your liver it's all under the rib cage all here spleen and liver these yeah. are the organs yes and they are not working good i had a ayurvedic um consultation not really working good so you see so you need to look into this attentively and tackle it from both sides mm. from applica- apl- applying the wisdom of mm, that comes with what the knowledge of the rasayanas the knowledge of the herbs right as reminders on a cellular level reminders to the body that's what plant kingdom is mm. plant kingdom here is to remind us about our divine essence this is sung in the rig veda may plants be that may they fulfill their destiny may they remind men of their divine essence we're here to serve the gods we're here to keep the heaven and earth in harmony this is the purpose of plants so and working also at the level of what could cause that what causing that at the uh, psychosomatic level mm-hmm. so that you don't work just from one level so that there is also redressing this why liver liver spleen this is the organs known for becoming a seed of indigested emotions such as jealousy anger regret right 
all this envy, anger, regret causes this, what is experienced somatically, very painful, very unpleasant. Mm -hmm. The pangs of jealousy can eat us inside, Othello. Remember? No? Shakespeare? Okay. In a nutshell, you know, he was this prince from Mauritania, beautiful, dark-skinned prince, right? At the time of the... when Venice was a place when everything was happening. And it's a to topic of Shakespeare's tragedy, one of his tragedies, Othello. Mm. I don't know in English how do you pronounce this. Okay. Othello, yeah. And he had a loving wife, Desdemona, and she was local, you know, and they, they wear this like, you know, his dark skin, beautiful masculine, and she's this as fairy as the porcelain, Italian beauty. But of course, seeing the love, you know, would set a lot of envy in many hearts. And this one nasty particular person who had advan made advances on her, and she being a faithful wife, completely, of course, you know, ref refused that. So he turned very, very angry, and he decided to destroy, destroy her. So he concocted some nasty um, set of evidence to frame her and passed it on to Othello. And though Othello loved his wife dearly, you know, there is this aria of Othello, which is, it's also transformed into music, into an opera. You know, it's a Shakespearean play, and it's also turned into an opera, as many of Shakespeare's plays, by the way. Um, and it is that agony that he's experiencing, you know, and unable to deal with that, you know, he settles for giving way to the lowest form of expression of that. And he kills this demon in the pangs of jealousy, you know. So that famous aria where he sings, when he's asking her, standing back to her because he cannot show his face in distress, you know. Did you pray, my lady, tonight? You know, did you pray, my lady, tonight? And, you know, and she just innocently like, what, what's wrong, my lord? What's wrong, my lord? You know, of course, you know, you know. You know more than anyone else. I always pray at night. You know, when they then let thy will be done. He takes this as a... and kills her. See? But what Shakespeare portrays there with extraordinary uh, um, insights of, of master psychology, psychologist is this minute emotions. Mm -hmm. See? That Othello. Otherwise, the tragedy would be called Desdemona. No, it's called Othello because it's his torment. Mm. It's the torment that he goes through. You know? What will win? See? And this pangs of, pangs of jealousy, he describes it. It's like, you know, it's better to have received many, many daggers at the same time into my flesh than to feel this, what he feels. So, I'm only saying this to you now. Well, if you knew what Othello was, I wouldn't have gone into this whole thing. <laughs> Just thank God I can't sing, otherwise I would have sung the full aria. <laughs> no. um, so, these emotions, you know, they when they're not let out, they literally can destroy us. They can destroy us. And of course, um, given your understanding, it won't be difficult to trace where this could come from. And the point is, is not that where this come from, why you feel that. 
you have to embrace this human side, this human condition. Embrace it, acknowledge, accept, so that you can rise. Rise to your true status of who you are. And the true status of who you are is always above human condition. Always in all circumstances. In other words, the essence of who you are, whenever you say I, I, whenever you say something with reference to yourself, irrespective of how you feel in the moment, it's only one presence you speak of. It's that presence. That presence that shines forth in all circumstances. It's the only you in you. The only true you in you. See? So that is untouched by any experiences. Doesn't matter what we went through in our lives. Doesn't matter how life might have been cruel in those most innocent phases of our unfoldment, development. That part in us, which represents the essence of who we are, have never been touched by any of this. See? This is the most important revelation which needs to be brought as a daily reminder. Daily reminder until you are fully established in that reminder, just as what we drove, drew earlier with these reminders, with all this mighty philosophy, which positions who is here plays the role of individual in this drama of life. In the same way, we rise. Rise by virtue of rising within. Nobody can uplift you other than yourself. Why? Because that's the only power. There's no other outside of you power. You see? But before that, acknowledgement and acceptance of that human condition that act of compassion, empathy, which includes here everyone involved, every character. On a stage, it's all real. On a stage, it's all real. On a stage, we kill each other. On a stage, we betray each other. On a stage, we do amazing things, act of chivalry and courage, sacrifice and cruelty despicable things and then we go backstage okay sit down have some mineral water you know like you know, like wipe out the wipe off the makeup you know and like and someone who just killed you in on the stage help, helping to uh, rubbing your shoulders yeah you've been great tonight darling you, <laughs> you think so yeah i think you really nailed it you know like well, next time when you kill me, can you go like, because like, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, you're overdoing it, man. <laughs> got you, got you, you know. Can I buy your drinks? Some, some kind of like, yeah. Too. So, you know, like backstage, <laughs> no backstabbing. <laughs> no front stabbing. Nothing. It's just like in heaven, whoever stood the opposite side of the battlefield, having fun completely. You know, like as if nothing happened. On the way up there, <laughs> you know, everything, I mean, like, so, it got to be real. And this empathy also comes from that, that compassion comes from that. All these dramas are played on our behalfs. The victim and perpetrator, subject and object, Victim and perpetrator here, the abuser and abused, see, locked in the drama of life, in that whole whirlpool, in that whole whirling, see, and you are twice born, okay, daughter of wisdom, you're, you're here to truly taste the fruits of that wisdom, which is bliss. To partake in that. So the whole creation partakes in that through you. So you can't afford to carry this. To carry this. So you need to find a way to express all that. 
find a way, the outlet for all and everything that has been bottled in. Bottled in with no outlet. Uncork it. Let it let it come out. Okay? How you find, what you find, you know? So you've got this now here, right? You've got this sorted. So you have the all this wisdom of the Mother Earth in whatever system of medical tradition that you feel most affinity. Check the allopathic state of affairs as well. You know, what is it there? Go through some examinations. Don't just sleep on it. And find yourself, find this outlet for creative self-expression. Okay? So, you do yoga. You know the line pose? You know its benefits? Yes, that. <laughs> Ten times more. <laughs> yeah. See? What does it do? You remember? Mm -hmm. no. no what? I remember at this moment. Okay. So it relieves any excess of bile. Okay. It relieves, it purges very quickly the body of bile. Any excess accumulation of fire element, pitta. Mm -hmm. See? And all this what we spoke of this so-called negative emotions, they're negative only when they are unable to find their outlet. Otherwise, they cannot be spoken of as negative. In the theory of Rasavada and the understanding of the Rasas, which I hope you have some, you know, in, in this, there's all there, it's all this here. Right? All emotions are colors of the spectrum. All of them are of value. But any excess, any accumulation leads to this undesirable set of circumstances when it begins to create havoc. Mm. It sets in and then begins to, yeah, it begins to cause tremendous discomfort and eventually pain. So you need to find an outlet for that. Okay? Okay. So it's like the po the line pose here is a metaphor. You see? Yeah. The line pose is given line. It's more, it's a deep, very deep. Why is it called line pose? See? And like in your case it will be lioness. You know? The queen of the jungle. Right? goes like in a, on the knees, extends, right? And tang out and let the whole gut out with that. <laughs> you know? So that it's from the gut, all this let out. Not... <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> okay, dear. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.